Welcome to Lab 2 Measurement. Now, in this particular lab, you're going to be learning how to read measuring devices to gather data for experiments. Now, in future virtual labs, I will be doing the same thing. I will be performing the experiment, and then I will simply pause when you're supposed to take a measurement. I'm not going to tell you to take a measurement. You're just going to have to know, okay, he's sitting right there on that measurement. I need to write it down on my data table. And then you can go ahead and do that. Now, for this particular lab, we need the following materials. We need an aluminum block. We need a ruler. We need tap water, which will go into a graduated cylinder. And you will also need a beam balance, which I have right over here. So, what is the first item on the agenda according to this lab? The very first thing we have to do is to record the mass of the aluminum block on the balance. See, we're going to find the density of aluminum. And we're going to find it in two ways. As you're aware, density is equal to mass divided by volume. So we can measure its mass really easily. All we need to use is this little gadget right here. To get its volume, however, there are two ways we can get the volume of a regular solid. We can get the volume of a regular solid either by measuring its length, width, and height with a ruler, or by doing water displacement with a graduated cylinder. So we're going to get volume both ways so that you get an opportunity to learn how to use all three measuring devices. So let's start off by recording the mass of the block by placing it on the balance. So let me get the balance ready for you. Here we are. Here is the balance. I'm going to move this out. There we go. Get the whole thing in the view. There we are. So what we do is we just take the aluminum block and we place it on the balance plate. But before we do that, we want to make sure that our balance is zeroed. And as you can see, it is not zeroed. Now, why is that? Let's check these mass riders. This rider is the hundreds place. Oh, and it wasn't clicked into place. This rider is for the tens place. This rider is for the ones place. And this rider is for the tenths, the hundredths, and the thousands. Three places with just one slider. Now, how do we know if the balance is even? Well, we take a look over here, and you'll notice that it's not quite lining up. So what we do is we just simply turn this knob on the end. And let's see what that does. It's a little closer. Let's turn it again just a little bit. And there we are. So now I can take this and place it on the beam balance. So we move the mass riders. We will start off with moving the hundreds place. Okay. Moving the tens place. Okay. Moving the ones place. And then moving the final place. Let's start off here and then I will adjust it a little bit more fine tune. This particular part is so fidgety, it's going to be the part that would take you the most time to actually adjust. Now, they do make digital versions of this, but as far as this class is concerned, that's cheating. Okay. Let's see if we're there yet. Just a hair more. and just a half a hair more. 
Yeah, maybe more than that. It is. There we go. Okay, right on the line. Now, let's take a look at what our mass is. Here is the mass. That is the hundreds place. There is the tens place. There is the ones place. Now, where you're going to need to focus your effort, you have that, the tens and the ones place, where you're going to need to focus your effort is in the last three places. So go ahead and record that. The next item we have to look at is recording the length, width, and height of the aluminum block. The length, the width, and the height of the aluminum block. So let's do that now. Length, width, and height. This is measured in centimeters. Okay, now the next thing is to calculate the density of the block using density equals mass divided by volume. Why don't you go ahead, pause the video, and do that now. Now we're going to determine the density of aluminum based on water displacement. You can just copy the mass of aluminum you had from your previous page because that mass won't have changed. It's still going to weigh the same as it did before, so just copy that value down. Now let's see. Record the volume of the block by filling a 25 milliliter graduated cylinder halfway with water and gently sliding the block down into it. So you always want to turn the water on first and then put the graduated cylinder under the water like so. Now I'm using a 50 milliliter graduated cylinder, but that's fine. There we go. Okay. So the first thing we need to know is the initial volume of the water. So what volume are we starting at? So let's have a look at the starting volume of the water. Let's get you level with it. You always want to read from the bottom of the meniscus, the lowest point. Okay, now we need to slide this, the uh, block down into it to get the final volume. So let's do that. Let's slide the block down. Let's try it. Let's see. That way the water doesn't splash out of the tube, the cylinder, while you do that. Now I'm going to tap the water bubbles out. Okay, I mean air bubbles, <laughs> water bubbles. And let's find the volume with the cylinder in place. There we go. All right. Now that you have the mass, the initial volume, and the final volume, go ahead and calculate the volume of the block using volume equals final minus initial volume. Show your work, including all units. Round properly. And then calculate the density of the block using density equals mass divided by volume. Show your work, including all units, and round properly. Now that you're done with that, Determine the average density of aluminum. Now that you're done with that, determine your experimental error. 
you can find the formula on reference table T of your reference tables. Once you have this entirely done, just submit it.